Hey guys, James with TFB TV. Today on TFB TV, I'm at the St. Bernard Indoor Shooting Center, the nicest range in the New Orleans area, and I've got the Ruger Security 9 Compact. This is Ruger's new smaller version of the recently introduced Security 9, which I reviewed and I actually thought was a very good gun for the money. Street price on these things is running like 300 bucks, and it, it was a good gun. Go back and watch that review. I think I was hitting silhouette targets on steel, at like 50 yards, like seven or eight out of 10 times, which is great for like a little economy gun. So this is the 10 plus one. It's a double stack nine millimeter. And when I say 10 plus one double stack compact nine millimeter, what does everybody think? Oh no, we got a Glock 26. Uh, 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 uh. Today on TFB TV, which one of these guys is better? And a lot of you are saying right now, understandably, James, you are an idiot. How can you compare the Glock 26, that's like a $500 gun, to a $300 street price Security 9? And I think that is a fantastic question, but watch me do it right now. The Glock 26 versus the Ruger Security 9. Why would you compare these guns? Well, the Security 9 Compact and the Glock 26 are both 10 plus one subcompact 9 millimeters that work great for concealed carry. You're also talking about a $500 gun versus a $300 gun, so can you fairly compare them? And my answer to you would be yes. I think you can make a good argument for either of them working very well, either of them being better than the other, but you have to factor in cost. Now, before I get too deep in the comparison, let's talk about what I liked about the Security 9 series. You guys could probably remember from about a year ago, I did the Security 9 full size, that's the 15 plus one. It's actually closer to a Glock 19 in size. I did a review of that gun and I was like, wow, I wanted to trash this gun. You know, a $300 gun, I wanted to trash it and I ended up absolutely loving it. Most of all, because of the trigger. It uses the LCP2 trigger system, which is like, I call it a single and a half action. It pre-cocks the hammer. It's a hammer fired gun, unlike the Glock 26, which is striker fired. So I thought it was gonna be this terrible double action trigger, but actually what it does, every time you wreck that slide, it pre-cocks the hammer and your trigger pull, it's very light, very smooth, and actually has a pretty good reset because all you're doing is bringing that hammer back ever so slightly before it releases. So it's like, it's not a single action, it's not a double action, it's like a single and a half action because it pre-cocks the hammer before it fires, making for an excellent trigger pull. I was hitting seven, eight out of 10 times. I was hitting a target, a, a steel silhouette target at 50 yards with the Security 9 full size. So that was kind of cool. Let's see if we can hit it. We're 50 yards out. Ultimately, I opined that for $300, this is probably one of the best values that you can get in a handgun. All right, guys, we're gonna shoot a magazine of Federal Syntec. I love this stuff. A lot of lead exposure whenever you're a professional shooter. Uh, Lead-free primers, the jacket is made out of a polymer. And so you, it results in like 10 to 15% less heat transfer to your gun, less wear and tear on the barrel, less lead exposure to the shooter, most importantly, better for the environment, and it's still pretty cheap. I've been shooting that a lot today. Huge fan, Federal sent it in. Thank you guys so much. An interesting thing, if you shoot Federal HST, this is tuned, so it will have the exact same trajectory as your Federal HST hollow point ammo, so it's great for practice. If you carry Federal HST, enough talking, let's see how this Ruger shoots. I'd say pretty well. I mean, just chunking it uh, 10 rounds at, I think we're at 15 or 20 yards here. You know, uh, put it all into three and a half inches, four inches or so. Let's do another one. 
So as with most manufacturers that are making guns where you, you're dangling a pinky, like the Glock 26 or a lot of the single stack 9mm compacts out there, the Ruger Security 9 compact comes with a magazine that uh, it came with an extra base plate. Great texturing, by the way, on this base plate, so you don't have to dangle a pinky. Did you guys just see that? Just inertia charged. Um, so we're hot. One pet peeve, all manufacturers seem to do this. I, I really wish that this was like a plus one or a plus two. Like if you're gonna add that, uh, that additional length to the butt, I would really like to see additional capacity as well. But whatever, at least it's nice that they include that in the box. So if you're not a pinky dangler, uh, you have a, a very well thought out grip extension here. You can see there's nothing uh, behind, there's nothing underneath uh, you just have like a little plate here to rest your pinky finger. So it's pretty nice. Now we're shooting Federal HST hollow point ammunition. Will this gun shoot hollow point? Will it ever? Damn. 10 yards, um, rapid fire, all in a very tight, three or three and a half inch circle. I think that's a three inch circle up there. Still don't like, it's got one of the nubbiest slide releases in the biz, um, even nubbier than the Glock, if that's a word. Um, so not my favorite, I would probably, it will inertia charge you smack it hard enough. And I, I guess I'd go over the top with this one, just I really don't trust this slide release. Yep, see, there you go. A little too nubby for me. Ah, got it that time. Same thing with the safety. You guys know I kind of ranted about the full-size version safety. I thought it wasn't very usable, but this one actually is better. This one seems like it's more responsive. The full-size safety was jamming up a little bit. Maybe they fixed that. There's no binding with this safety. It works whenever you want it to, so maybe it's okay. And it provides a little spot for you to put your thumb if you so choose, even though it's a little bit close to the slide. More Federal 124 grain HST in this tiny little Ruger. Let's see if we can get that inertia lock again. Ugh, just did it. So weird, so Weird. I guess it's because it's like a single and a half action only. So it basically pre-cocks the hammer every time you fire or whenever you chamber around. So this is a hammer fired gun, but it's not really a double action only. It's like a single and a half action because it's kind of got, it pre-cocks the hammer. And when you pull that trigger back, it's just a little bit of travel before it travels forward, uh, hitting the firing pin, detonating the round, sending it down range. Now, let us compare the Glock 26 to the Ruger Security 9 Compact. Tail of the tape. You are looking at a 3.42 inch barrel on the Security 9 Compact. Pop quiz, what are you looking at on the Glock 26? Is it larger, is it smaller? Enter your guesses, phone a friend. It is longer, but it's only 3.43 inches. So you're talking one hundredth of an inch longer, virtually the same. Overall length, six and a half inches for the Security 9 Compact, 6.4 inches to the Glock 26. Virtually the same, slight edge to the Glock 26. Now for weight, 21.9 ounces for the Ruger Security 9 Compact versus 19.4 ounces for the Glock 26. Now that two and a half ounce difference is pretty substantial. I think 22 ounces, that's closer to like a Glock 19 or maybe even a Glock 17 in weight, where the Glock 26 has two and a half ounces on the Security 9. So that's a pretty big leg up for the Glock 26. Now what about the width, girth? How girthy it is, is very important to concealed carry. Everybody in the world knows that the Glock 26 is 1.26 inches thick. Well, how thick is the Ruger Security 9 Compact. I'll give you a dollar if you can answer correctly. Not really, but if I did, what you would do is you would close this video, then you would go to, or may, hopefully open a new tab, and you would go to Ruger's website, and Ruger, clever dogs that they are, they have the width listed as one inch thick, 
at the slide. That's true, albeit a little bit deceptive. It's true that the slide's only one inch thick, which is very thin, but that's not the thickest part of the gun. The thickest part of the gun is right around the trigger guard. And I took my trusty caliper and I measured the thickness at the trigger guard and I got a hair under 1.2 inches thick. So Ruger, be proud about it. You are in fact thinner than a Glock 26 with the Security 9 Compact. So we've got somewhat of a tied game at this point. However, with the Security 9 Compact, you've got forward slide serrations. With the Security 9 Compact, you've got a rail under the dust cover. You don't have either of those things with the Glock 26. Some people are going to like that LCP2 style trigger that's in the Security 9 Compact versus the trigger and the Glock 26. A lot of people hate factory Glock triggers. It's true, I know. But when you're looking at street price, you're talking around 500 bucks for a Glock 26 versus 300 bucks for a Ruger Security 9. So on, on paper, it, it sounds a lot closer really than it should be for a $300 gun versus a $500 gun. Now, me being the Glock guy that I am, what I would tell you is look, I like with the Glock 26 that I've got decades of reliability behind it, reputation for reliability behind it. I've got a nitro carburizing process that is virtually bulletproof when it comes to rust or corrosion. I know the Glock 26 is durable. I know it's going to go bang every time I pull the trigger. Although I have to say that the Ruger Security 9, just like its big brother, was 100% reliable today, even though I didn't clean it or lube it with every single thing I put through it. We used Ventura Munition Hollow Point, Ventura Munition Ball Round, Federal Syntec, which is a great polymer-coated lead-free primer round. I absolutely love that stuff. You guys should go check it out. Uh, ran that through it. We ran Federal HST hollow points through it, 124 grain, ran perfectly, no hiccups. So it's been a pretty reliable gun. Now, the manual straight up tells you with the Security 9, because the slide is made out of like a steel alloy, they tell you to not run plus P plus through it. Now, nobody's gonna tell you, please, will you please run plus P plus ammo through our gun? Because it's outside of SAMI spec. That is, it's totally unregulated. So they don't want the potential liability, which is understandable. But with the Glock 26, I know I can run plus P plus through it. Like federal 9 BPLE will work perfectly out of a Glock 26. I'd be worried I would crack the alloy alloy frame in the Security 9. Also, I don't know what the finish process is on the Security 9 slide, but I do trust the PVD or the nitro carburizing or Tenefer or whatever the case may be, depending on what generation of Glock I have. I do know and I trust it, right? Also, third-party support. Sure, I'm sure that these guns are going to be popular enough that you are going to have some third-party support in terms of accessories and holsters, but I know, I know that I'm going to be able to get basically whatever I want in terms of accessories, parts, upgrades for Glock 26. It's got to be one of the most popular on the market today. So I guess in conclusion, I wanted to hate the Security 9, but I was shocked when I shot it, whatever, over a year ago. And I was like, wow, this gun actually performs quite well for being a budget price pistol. So I wasn't surprised when the Ruger Security 9 Compact performed just as well and really held its own against a much more expensive and much more revered competitor in the Glock 26. Am I going to start carrying a Ruger Security 9 Compact instead of a Glock 26? No, no, of course not. But. I have to applaud Ruger for what they've done with the Security 9 series. They have produced a firearm that you can purchase for $300 street price. That is a budget gun. They've loaded it with features to the point where I can make a serious comparison between a $300 gun and a $500 gun. So they've done a great job with the series. They've made self-defense, and not only self-defense, but a, a pragmatically useful gun with a decent trigger and a decent feature set available to people who might not otherwise be able to afford, say, a Smith & Wesson M&P or a Glock 26 or a Glock 19, whatever the case may be. So good job, Ruger. I am yet again impressed with the Ruger Security 9 series. I think this has been one of the most important handguns, really, that's come out in the past five, six, seven years. You've, you've seen a lot of people trying to bite into Glock's action, and what they've basically been doing is copying Glock and then charging less for it, right? And some of them have been successful at that, like the Smith & Wesson M&P series. They make a great product, a great, true, bona fide competitor to the Glock series. But I really like seeing a company like Ruger say, hey, we're going to take a different approach. We're going to make it cheap, 
but we're gonna make it functional. And that's what they've done. Again, great job, Ruger. If you guys are looking for something in the $300 range, I don't think that really there's much of a choice until you go to the secondhand market. I don't think there's anything better out there for $300 right now than the Ruger Security 9, the full size or the compact. And the compact is gonna be great for deep concealment. Now guys, let me talk to you seriously for a second. YouTube has been majorly up our ass. We have had a lot of videos demonetized. We've been emailing back and forth with them. Things are hitting critical mass. The, basically the only reason that we're still here is because of our Patreon supporters. Go to patreon.com slash TFBTV. You have the option to give us one, two, five, or $10. We give something back. You get patches no matter what, TFB patches. And if you give at any dollar amount, you're automatically entered to win one of the best gun belts in the entire world. That is a blue Alpha Gear gun belt up to $100. If you give it the $5 or the $10 level, you are automatically entered to win a free gun every single month. You can go to tfbtv.gun.team to see the details on that. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much to our Patreon supporters and our subscribers. It also helps if you subscribe. Turn off notifications, click that little bell if you don't wanna get notifications, but do us a favor and subscribe to us at least. And thanks a ton to Federal and Ventura Munitions for sending in the ammo that we use today. Guys, I love you, I love making these videos. Thank you for keeping us afloat, Patreon supporters. See you next week.